Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Hello, friend. I'm so excited to have you back today. I hope you're having an amazing winter break, and I am so excited to be back with another episode. Today's episode is four guiding questions to help you create a mission statement. What is a mission statement? (laughs) Why do you need one as a music teacher? When you do goal setting and you really strive to reach those goals, it's what keeps you motivated to keep going. Maybe it's been a while since you've thought about goals or you've never really done anything like this besides your teaching philosophy you had to do in college, right? But what I want to do is help you in this episode think through four questions that will help guide you as you create your mission statement. Then I want you to hang this statement by your desk or you could write it on a sticky note or maybe you can't fit it on a sticky note so you write it on a piece of paper uh, or even put it in the notes app on your phone to refer to it from time to time. Because when, not if, you're having one of those crazy hard days, we all know those come, this mission statement will remind you of your why and will help keep you going. So there's four questions. Number one, why did you become a music teacher? This answer will look different for everyone because your why is your why. I want you to think about how excited you were to become a teacher when you could have done anything else When you were thinking about becoming a music teacher, maybe it was right out of high school, you chose to be a music education major. Maybe you're like me and I started as a piano performance major and then I switched to music education my sophomore year. Maybe you don't have a music education degree, but you got alternatively certified or whatever your journey looks like for you is your journey. But I want you to really think about how excited you were to become a music teacher. What was the reasons behind it? What were the feelings you were feeling when you were preparing to be a music teacher or when you got your first position? I want you to really remember that because that will help you in shaping the why behind becoming a music teacher. What were you envisioning in college or as you got your first position? What were you thinking about setting up your classroom, um, how you wanted to teach your students? What goals were you setting for yourself? That is going to help you remember your why as well. What were the thoughts you had or the plans you wrote out? It's probably been a while since you've thought about that, but I want you to think back to that because that same excitement you had, that started your whole why, your whole journey in becoming a music teacher. So I want you to think through the thoughts you had, the plans you were thinking through when you were wanting to become a music teacher. Remember those things and write them down. Maybe you're like, I don't remember what I was thinking. That was so long ago. Well, then think about how you're feeling now, where the excitement you're still having for teaching music. Why is that? What, what is the reason you show up and teach music to students? What, what excitement, what excites you from that? And I want you to write down those feelings. Number two, when we're thinking about creating a mission statement is I want you to think through this question. What sets you apart from other music teachers? I talk to a lot of music teachers from mentoring one-on-one. I do a lot of one-on-one music teacher coaching. I coach music teachers all the time in my Harmony membership. I answer questions in my direct messages on Instagram or whatever else it might be. And I hear this a lot is 
there's nothing that sets me apart or it's too hard for me or I'm not good enough. And maybe you're sitting here listening. You're like, oh yeah, I answered that question yesterday. So, but I want you to realize that there is something unique that sets you apart. Yes, there really is something or some things that set you apart. You're a unique person. There is no one like you. There is no one that can teach your students the way you are. I mean that wholeheartedly from like, I really do. I'm not just saying that just to say it, just to butter you up and be like that a boy. I really want you to hear me when I say that there's something unique that sets you apart. So I want you to really think through that. What is that? What sets me apart from other music teachers? The awesome thing is, is that this answer doesn't have to look like anyone else's answer because it's you, because it's your answer. It's okay if you're not into teaching a certain instrument like the recorder or the ukulele, but singing is your jam. That sets you apart. You enjoy singing. And when you have a passion for something, it is totally going to rub off on your students. They're going to become passionate about it because you are. How you're showing up is how your students are going to show up for you. If they see the excitement on your face and you're so excited to teach a lesson, they're going to be excited about learning it too. Not always. This is not like a, this is going to be the magic solution every day. But for the most part, when you're excited and you're sharing your journey and you're like, listen, I was a vocal major. I sang for opera theater and this is why I love singing. And this is how singing has changed my life. Your students are going to be so excited about that. And that definitely sets you apart. I've shared before, I'm not nat- a natural singer. It is not my jam. But what I love doing is instruments. I love teaching instruments to kiddos and my students responded well to that. So think about what sets you apart. Maybe you love implementing technology and that comes easily to you. That is definitely something that sets you apart as a music teacher. That's definitely something that should go into your mission statement of why you like using technology and how you're going to continue implementing it with your kiddos. Maybe you love dancing around the classroom with your students. This is something you definitely enjoy doing. And you don't care if you look like a fool in front of your kids. You don't care what you look like in front of them because you just love it. You love doing it so much. So I want you to write down anything that comes to mind that you're proud of and include this in your mission statement. Hey friends, I want to interrupt this episode real quick to let you know that the doors to my Harmony membership are now open. You can join us until Tuesday, January 4th, and I would love to see you in there as a member. If you are not familiar with what the Harmony membership is, it has been definitely been created with you in mind. Maybe you're sick of planning lesson plans, or maybe you have so many resources and materials available to use, but you're just not quite sure where to start, and you feel like you're spinning your wheels, or there's just so much amazingness out there, you don't really know how to organize it all then I would love for you to come into the membership site and let me help you. The very first thing you see as a member is a start here section. You identify where you're at in the success path and you will get action steps to help you move forward from feeling overwhelmed to confident. There are many trainings, PDFs available. There is an organized schedule of what's happening each week and it does not cause more overwhelm, but it helps you simplify your teaching life when it comes to planning, classroom management, organization, and your mindset. So this membership site is totally for you if you're sick of creating lesson plans every week and you want some done for you plans that you can just turn in or edit as your own, then that is what you get in there. You get mentorship, there's accountability groups, there is, like I said, the success path to help you identify where you're at, whether it's burnt out, hopeful, relieved, or confident, and it's a continuous circle. Every month you get a mindset Facebook live with me where I go in and answer any member questions and I support you and I I really look at what is 
what teachers are struggling with when it comes to mindset. And I go through that in depth in a Facebook live, you get accountability week where you get a mentor. You can sign up to be in an accountability group. We have member calls and I offer them at two times. So you can pick the time that works for you. And everything is offered on replay. If you can't make it live as well, you get monthly lesson plan packs full of lesson plans that are created and modified to fit whether you teach virtually, whether you teach on a cart, whether you teach in an in-person setting, you can edit them as your own. You get classroom management tw- tips. You get um, tips for work lo- work-life balance and so much other things in these packs that you need to be a member to see. Uh, you get implementation week. This is a week where there's nothing new thrown your way, but any thing you maybe have missed that you want to catch up on, then you will get a whole week to do that. You also get ongoing support through email. You get a calendar. You get, oh my gosh, you guys, so much more that I can't even say on this ad, but I would just love for you if you have any questions at all that you just reach out to me, Jessica at the domestic musician.com. And I would love to answer your questions and please don't let the fact that maybe you're like, Oh, I don't need one more thing, or I'm already in this program, or I already have a curriculum. This is not that this is totally different. I promise you and go to harmonymembership.teachable.com. Click on where it says start here and read all about the benefits of being a member. You can listen to member stories. You can watch a video to take you behind the scenes of what it's like being a member. And I actually have a chat box there where I can answer your questions live as well. So I hope you will join us. I can't wait to support you on your music teaching journey. And I'll see you inside as a Harmony member. Number three. What unique skills or talents do you bring into your music classroom? Are you an instrumentalist or a singer? Are you organized? This is definitely something that is unique or a talent that is something that every teacher is not good at. Do you love to decorate and change up your bulletin boards? This is definitely a unique skill or talent. Are you great at building relationships with those kiddos of yours? Maybe this is just something that comes easily to you. Like building relationships is your jam. It's not hard. It it is something that having conversations with your kids is something that you just love to do. Is working with special learners something you love to do and something you love to inspire other teachers and how to do that as well? Do you love putting on musical performances? I want you to write any of these thoughts down. Maybe it's something I said, or maybe it's another question that you never that you have that you, that maybe I didn't mention. And so I want you to think about unique skills or talents you bring into your classroom. And this goes into your mission statement because what happens is when you think about your unique skills and talents and you put it in a mission statement, then it's going to help you continue bringing these unique skills and talents into your classroom and to help you realize that, okay, wow, I do have these skills. I do have these talents and I'm going to continue using them with my kiddos and in my classroom and in my teaching practice, because it's something that I am passionate about. It's something I thrive in doing. And it's something I actually enjoy sharing with other teachers. So put that into your mission statement. And number four, what is your goal as a music educator? Now, we talked about at the beginning of this episode, your goal when you became a music teacher, whether that was in college or whether that was your first position, but I don't want that to just stop. You know, they have us think through that in college of creating a teaching philosophy, but I hadn't even stepped foot into my classroom yet. So I can tell you my goal before I became a teacher and then my goal every single year as a teacher changed. So I want your mission statement to include your goal as a music educator and as small goals and long-term goals and know that your mission statement is going to change. It should be a fluid thing that changes every year because you are going to change as a person and you're going to continue changing in your teaching and you're going to maybe be at a different school or whatever it might look like for you. So when we talk about what is your goal as a music educator, I want you to think about everything you want to accomplish, both short and long term. So that could look like week to week, month to month, year to year, five years down the road. I want you to think about these goals. Write down your goals for yourself 
as a teacher, what are your goals? Maybe there is a per- particular training you want to go to. Maybe there is something you want to improve upon in your teaching practice. But I also want you to think about your goals for your students. Where are they now? Where do you want them to be? And why? Always think about the why behind it. Not just because someone told you to, not just because you think that's the right thing to do, but why? When you're thinking about getting your students to a certain point, I always want you to consider your why. So set goals for yourself and let this motivate you to keep going. Here's some goals that I had for myself and that maybe this is going to apply to you as well. I've shared my story about a thousand times now on this podcast, but I started at a school that hadn't had nothing. So one of my goals for myself was to purchase instruments. I set some big goals where if I got a grant, these were the all the instruments I wanted to purchase. But I also set some small goals as well, where my first instruments I purchased were the boomwhackers and then the recorders. And then we just kind of slowly built up from there. What I really want you to do is to also think about the fact that if you don't meet these goals you set for yourself, it's okay. I think having a goal is great, but I think we can be hard on ourselves when we don't reach that particular goal because you're like, oh my gosh, well, I was going to get this and this and this by this point. And if it doesn't happen, you get hard on yourself. So set goals and know that if you don't get to them, if it is purchasing instruments, that's okay because you will eventually build up where where you want to be in your classroom. Maybe your goal is to start an honor choir. Maybe this is something you've always wanted to do, but you're not quite sure what to do or how to do it or the steps to take. So maybe make this a goal of yours. My goal is by next school year, I'm going to start an honor choir. Okay, so from here to that point, what do I need to do in order to get that accomplished? Is it purchasing music? Is it having tryouts? Is it having a conversation with my administration? Is it figuring out logistically when are rehearsals going to be? Those are things you think through while you're setting goals. Maybe your goal is to have your students at a certain point when it comes to singing. Maybe it's adopting a new curriculum like my Harmony membership. Hello, come and join us. I have fully done for you lesson plans for the entire school year. I'm talking the entire school year that follows a curriculum map that I created for kindergarten through fifth grade. So maybe one of your goals is to adopt a new curriculum, whether it's a virtual curriculum, an in-person curriculum, or whatever it might be. Maybe one of your goals is to teach recorder or ukulele for the very first time. Maybe what's been holding you back is the intimidation of never doing that particular thing. So you're like, I want to do that, but I'm a little scared and nervous. I'm not going to do a great enough job. But here's the thing with goals is you're never going to be able to achieve them if you don't take the first step and just try and get out of your comfort zone. And maybe one of your goals is to make a more equitable classroom for your students. Maybe you are already doing this. You're already trying. And so effort and continuing to try are the key ingredients here. Create your mission statement. Share it on Instagram and tag me at Jessica Peresta. And come and share it in the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group as well. I would love to see your mission statement. Maybe create it into a PDF. Maybe you just come in in there and answer those four questions I've shared on this episode. But I would love to see it and help cheer you on because I know creating a mission statement, it's hard. It's hard to think through these things and really to process through what is my mission statement for both long-term and short-term goals. And it's going to How is this going to help me keep going as a music teacher? And I would love for you to join us in the Harmony membership. We talk about this in so much more every single week. You're going to be surrounded by music teachers who get you um, and have the option of being a mentor or being mentored, accountability groups, member calls, and so much more support. You won't even know what to do with it. (laughs) So head to harmonymembership.teachable.com. Click on the Harmony Hub course to read all about the benefits of joining. And I hope to see you in there and to welcome you into our Harmony family. Have a great rest of your break. And I know that you're going to do incredible things in the next semester of your school year. And I will see you soon, friends. 
Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook Group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.